the idea of a sequence to that of a geometric series, all right? And in fact, that's the name of today's lesson. So let's look at an example. And suppose we had a series to, or a sequence such as 3, 6, 12, 24, 48, and so on. And looking at this sequence, I think you'll all agree that this is what kind of a sequence? This is what? Geometric, and we can check it by saying what? Three times what number is six? Two. Six times two is 12. 12 times two is 24. 24 times two is 48. I think sure enough we'll agree that it's geometric. Now, just as we did earlier, what I'd like to do is to construct another sequence, which I will write as s sub 1, comma, s sub 2, comma, s sub 3, s sub 4, and so on so that associated with s sub 1 is the first element, in this case the sum of the first number, which is simply the number 3. s sub 2 is the sum of the first two numbers, which is of our sequence, all right? s sub 3, then, is the sum of the first three numbers of our given geometric sequence, and so on. And in fact, we call this series that we have developed here a, what kind of a series? This is called a geometric series. Okay. There is our geometric series. Let's generalize this idea in which suppose we have a sequence of the pattern a sub 1, comma, a sub 2, comma, a sub 3, dot, dot, dot. Let's include some element a sub n minus 1, and then a sub n, and so on, in which I would like to say that this sequence is geometric, okay? In that a sub 1 times r is a sub 2, <coughs> and so on, as we had in our previous example. In the same way, let's then create that sequence, s sub 1, comma, s sub 2, s sub 3, and so on, up to some number, s sub n minus 1, s sub n, and so on, okay? Now, in such a way so that s sub 1 is going to be equal to what, the sum of the first term, which is in this case so simply a sub 1, s sub 2, that is the sum of the first two terms, let's call it a sub 2, s sub 3 we know then is going to be defined as the sum of the first three terms, and so on, and let's continue this down to some number s sub n, which is then going to be the sum of the first n terms of our, of our uh, sequence. Is that right? Let me include here a sub n minus 1, and then finally we have a sub n. Again, notice that our notation says that the sum of the first n terms of our, of our sequence. All right? And in fact, I think there's another pattern that we may write here. We know that uh, the fact that it is geometric, we may multiply a sub 1 times what number in order to give us a sub 2? That's our number, what? R. So our second term may be written as a sub 1 times R. Is that right? Our third term may be written as what? a sub 1 times R squared. And now let's leave out some elements there. This number here may be written as what? a sub 1 times r raised to the n minus 2. And finally, our last element is what? a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. And in fact, looking at that, I think you may you recognize there our pattern of the sigma notation. Let me just include this as our notational device, which we have a sub 1 times r. Let me call it j minus 1, where j then goes from 1 up to what element? up to n, and here is our notational device. Well, let's look at this uh, summation right here of our geometric series, and just as in our arithmetic series, we developed a formula, a general formula, which would give us the sum of the first n terms without having to add up all terms, so we would like to try to develop a formula for a geometric series, okay? So let's see if we can't do that. Well, let's just write a heading here of formula. And uh, let me rewrite that last statement that we made there in terms of a sub 1 plus a sub 1 r plus a sub 1 r squared and so on. What I'd like to do is to leave some space in there and then a sub 1 times r. Let me write n minus 2 and then finally a sub 1 times r to the what? n minus 1. Now, this is the sum of the first n terms of our geometric series. Is that right? All right. What I'd like to do is to try to develop a formula which is going to give us s sub n is equal to something in terms of n, say, and r, and a sub 1, which will then give us the sum of the first n terms immediately from that formula. Now, 
it would perhaps take a little bit of imagination, but what I'd like to do is to simply look at this and say to myself, let's decide to multiply both sides of this equation by the opposite of r, okay? And I'm not sure that I can really motivate that very well, but let's just pull out of our hat the opposite of r, okay? So if we multiply this side by the opposite of r, we're also going to multiply each term here on the right side by the opposite of r. Now, a sub 1 times the opposite of r is what? The opposite of what? A sub 1 times r. And I think here you're beginning to see the motivation behind this. All right, now I'm going to multiply this one by opposite of r, and hence we're go then going to get what? Minus what? A sub 1 r squared. And now here I'm going to multiply this one by opposite of r, so we'll, we'll have what? Minus a sub 1 times r cubed and so on with all of these dash symbols. Finally, the previous term right here, I'm going to multiply the opposite of r, and what then do we get? a sub 1 times r to the n minus 2. Is that right? And then finally, I'm going to multiply this one by the opposite of r, so it's then going to be minus, what? a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. And finally, I'm going to multiply this one by the opposite of r, and we're going to get what? Minus what do we have here finally at the end? A sub 1 times r to the to the n. All right? Okay. Now, let's look at these two equations, and what do you think you'd like to do? What would you like to do, Charles? Add let's them. add them. All right, let's just add them. So on the left-hand side, we'll have s sub n minus r times s sub n is equal to, and now notice on the right-hand side, when we're adding here, we have a sub 1 plus 0, so to speak, is a sub 1. And then when we add these two, we get 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 all the way across plus 0. And finally, at the end, we have what number? And we have what? Minus a sub 1 times r to the n. Okay? Now, right there, let's factor out on the left-hand side an s sub n, that is, use our distributive property, and we have what? s sub n times what? 1 minus r is equal to a sub 1 minus a sub 1 times r to the n. And now what do you think you'd like to do to both sides, Bill? Divide by 1 minus Let's r. divide by 1 minus r, and we have s sub n then is equal to a sub 1 minus a sub 1 times r to the n divided by 1 minus r. And of course, r cannot be equal to what number? r cannot be equal to 1. And right there, we have a formula which is then going to give us the sum of the first n terms in which we know what the first term is, we know this ratio, the common ratio of r, and we know the number of the term, okay? In fact, there's another pattern that we may write. We know something about uh, a sub n. What do we know that a sub n is equal to from what we had said earlier about a geometric, the nth term of a geometric sequence is equal to what? Well, we just uh, wrote it down any number of places. For example, right up here, we wrote it as what? a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. Now, what I'd like to do is to look at this and multiply both sides through by r. And if you were to multiply the right-hand side through by r, we have r times a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. And using commutativity and what have you, we then have r times r raised to the n minus 1, which is equal to what? r to the n. So on the right-hand side, we have a sub 1 times r to the n. Notice in our formula right here, there is a sub 1 times r to the n. So let's make that substitution, shall we? And then come up with another formula, which is in the pattern of s sub n then is equal to, we still have a sub 1 minus, and now what is another name that I'm going to put in here for a sub 1 times r to the n? What will it be? It will be what? r times a sub n, is that right? All divided by what? 1 minus r, where again, r cannot be equal to 1. And here then is a formula in which we may determine the sum of the first n terms, in which we know the first term, we know the common ratio r, and we happen to know the last term. Okay? So there are these two formulas which will prove very helpful to us as we try to find the sum of some geometric series. In fact, let's look at an example or two. Here is a problem in which it says find the sum of a geometric series if a sub 1 equals 5, a sub n equals 320, and r equals 2. 
Now notice here, you know the last term, you know the first term, and you know the common difference or the common ratio of two. So what formula do you think we're going to use? Let's just write it down in terms of a general case. And what formula they found? A sub one. We're going to use a sub one minus, minus r, times r times a sub n, sub n. okay, divided by one minus, one minus r. So let's now just make our substitution. A sub one is what number? Five minus r is what number? Two, two times a sub n is three twenty divided by one minus two, which is then equal to now one minus two we know is negative one. In the numerator we have five minus two. Well, let's include that five minus two times three twenty is six forty divided by negative one. Six forty minus five is. What, 635, but the negative 635 divided by a negative 1 gives us 635. And immediately we have the sum of the first, what, n a sub n terms. Now we really don't know how many terms there are in there, do we? And in fact, let's have that as another question. Let's look at this example, which it says, in example c sub 1, namely the one that we have just done, find the number of terms n in that series. All right? Now, uh, what formula do you think that we can use now in order to determine n? And let's again write down the general case. We have s sub n then is equal to, and what may we say here? Well, uh, let's look then at a sub 1 minus, and how about, uh, which one there, Bill? a sub 1 r to the n. a sub 1 times r to the n power. Now, that's the only one that has the number n in it, so in fact, I think we're forced into it, divided by what? 1 minus r. Now in this case, s sub n is what we have just determined, namely 635. So let's make that substitution. We have 635 then is equal to a sub 1 is still the number, what? Five. It's 5 minus 5 times, and what number is r? 2 raised to the n power divided by 1 minus 2. Okay? Now 1 minus 2 we know is negative 1. Let's multiply both sides through by that number negative one, and we have five minus five times two to the n. Let's now subtract five from both sides, and that gives us what on the left? Negative 640. At the same time, let me turn the whole thing around and have negative five times two to the n, then is equal to what? Negative 640. Let's now divide both sides by what number? By negative five. The negative in the negative is a positive number, 5 into 640 goes what? 5 into 6 goes 1, 14, 5 into 14 is 2, and 8, 128. Now, 2 raised to what power is 128? Well, let's see now. Rather than looking at the table, I know that it's there in the book, but let's see, there's perhaps one number that you should remember, and that is 2 to the fifth power is equal to 30, 32. And uh, so, Two times that number is 2 to the 6th is 64, so therefore what? 2 to the 7th power, therefore n is equal to 7, then is the number of terms that we have in this series. Okay? Let's look at another example. Here we have a, uh, a word problem in which we have a ball is dropped from the top of a building 256 feet high and bounces on a concrete pavement below. If the ball bounces one half of its previous height on each bounce, how far has the ball traveled when it hits the pavement the sixth time? In fact, this problem, I think, is somewhat similar to one that you had on, on a quiz. Well, let's set the problem up. Let's make a little picture. All right, here's the ground, say, or the pavement, and here's the top of the building in which we're then going to drop this ball, and it's going to be how, this could be a vertical number here, a vertical height, rather, this is going to be what? 256. All right, just to, as a schematic picture here, the ball then is going to bounce half of its height, is that right? And then it's going to come down again and then bounce half of its height and then down. Now we have one, two, that's the third bounce, the fourth bounce, the fifth bounce, and finally, is that right? One, two, three, four, five, and right there then is the sixth bounce. And we want to know what the sum of these distances is. Is that right? Well, look, there's one way in which we can look at it. Let's consider that uh, distance coming down, this one coming down, that's two, three, four, and five. Is that right? 
And what, if whatever number that is, there's a similar or the same number uh, going up. Is that right? So whatever number that is, if there would be twice that, and then we have in addition to that this first drop of 256. Okay. So let's see if we can't set it up. Let me come over here and let's have 256, which is the first drop there. Okay. And then plus, and let me write it as two times s sub what? And we have what? How many uh, sums are we talking about in this problem? How many sums? Five. Okay. Times s sub five is then going to be equal to something. Let me come down here to the next line. Is equal to now on the right hand side. I will write 256 again plus two times. Now let's put in our formula for s sub five. Now. The first, well, let's include our general case, first of all, which is what? A sub 1 minus what? Uh, well, we have, first of all, I don't think we know R sub n, uh, do we? So then let's write it as what? A sub 1 times what? R to the n, all divided by 1 minus R. Is that right? Okay. Now let's go ahead and make our substitutions. There's 256 plus 2 times, what number is a sub 1? Now a sub 1 is this number right here. And associated with that number is, with this uh, drop here, is what number? It's going to be half of this number, is that right? <coughs> which is, which is what? 128, okay? So there we have 128 minus, there's another 128 times r. What number is r? 1 half times n, and what number is n? A raised to the nth power, rather. n is what number? Five. five. Uh, all of this divided by one minus what? R is what number? One half. one half. Okay. Now let's see what this then is going to be equal to. There's 256 plus. Now one minus a half is what number? One half. And two divided by a half is what number? Careful. Four. Two four. divided by a half is four. four. Okay, so there we have the number four times, all right, now here we have 128 minus 128 times, right, and one half to the fifth power is what number? Four. Times one over 32, okay? Well, let's continue this 256 plus four times. Let's in fact use our distributive property and take out that number 128 and what's left? We have here what? 1 minus 1 over 32, which we know is what number? 256 plus. Let's just keep that as 4 times 128. 1 minus 1 30 second is 31. That's times 31 30 seconds, right? Now, 4 will divide 32, and we have then 8. Will 8 divide 128? We have 256 plus, and now... 4 times 8 is 32, so 8 into 128 goes what? 8 into 12 goes 1 and 16, okay? So we have 256 plus 16 times what? 31. In fact, uh, 16 divides 256, doesn't it? I think we had that number once before. And what number times 16 is 256? Remember that was its squared, right? So in fact, let's use our algebra here, and let's use our distributive property again. So if we factor out our number 16, what's left but 16 plus 31, and here we have then 16 times, and 16 plus 31 is what number? 47. Well, in fact, let's do this up right. Another name for 47 that I'll pull out of my, pull out of my hat is 50 minus 3. Uh, 5 times 16 is... is uh, 80, 80, is that right? It's 80, and 80 times 10 is what? 800 minus 3 times 16 is 48, and 800 minus 48 is 752. All of that from maybe right in here someplace, just to avoid multiplying 16 times 47. I think it's not a bad habit for you to get into occasionally to utilize your algebra and your arithmetic. Okay, so therefore, let's come to a conclusion here. Therefore, what? The ball travels, the ball travels, what? 752 feet uh, on the sixth bounce, or a total of, uh, uh, at the sixth bounce. Okay, and I think then that should be our conclusion.
Well, I think that's all that we need to do for today. So let me give you your homework assignment. This will be assignment number...